Hello there, I'm Hannah Wise. Welcome along. Our top story, Italy is in shutdown. Or is it? This is Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte. Last night, he put the whole country into lockdown as coronavirus cases continue to grow. And yet, the Swiss border with Italy remains open. CNN Money Switzerland's Greta Ruffino joins me now from Kia. So, Greta, just give us an idea of what's actually going on at the border today. Yes, Hannah. So we are here at the Chiasso border. We were here doing the rush hours, rush hour today between seven and eight. And there are cars from Italy coming in in Switzerland. That's because um, the border remains open. And of course, today is the day after, as you said, the, um, the Italian government announced that the entire country is locked down, which basically means that non-essential travel from to and within Italy is um, forbidden. Non-essential travel, however, does not include work. So so the, Swiss, so the Swiss government decided that the borders remain open. However, though, I have to add that... Well, I was going to say, Greta, this controlling... must be a relief for uh, business leaders in Switzerland because they rely on so many cross-border travellers. Yeah, that's right. So I spoke earlier to the director of Watch Components Manufacture, Manufacturer Airbus, um, Oliviero Presenti, who stressed out the importance or, of Italians in Ticino for the Ticino's economy. He said that in this industry, uh, out of his 120 workers, 100 are Italians. Let's take a listen. Our employees are going back home to Italy for now. If the situation remains unchanged, the people will continue to come to work and go home in the evening. Considering the possible upcoming changes, especially if the borders close, we are organizing ourselves to allow our workforce to remain in Ticino for a period of time long enough until the situation is resolved. We have very strict controls at the entry for our employees. Every morning, each employee's temperature is checked, and then again in the afternoon. In case there is a problem, the employee would be sent home immediately. So Swiss business owners must be relieved. What about Swiss people themselves? Are they happy with this continued cross-border traffic despite the lockdown in Italy? I, I talked to Swiss residents. I have to say there are mixed feelings because uh, many, of course, are afraid of the spread of the virus. But um, the people I talked to also um, said that Italians are very important for the Ticino's economy as well as the medical field. So they are not completely against the border being open. All right, Greta Ruffino, thank you very much indeed for uh, that report from Chiasso. Well, Tanya Koenig reports now on why businesses continue to rely on that Swiss border to Italy remaining open. Well, to have these workers every day, otherwise we have delays in production. And crossing the border is still relatively easy. There are checks in the territory right after the border where one can simply show a work permit to go through. Even the rail lines are open and there are still trains running from Switzerland to Milano. This is something that worries many in the region. The worries are justified, but we told the authorities that we're happy that the workers can still come because they are indispensable. On the other hand, we ask that the checks at the borders be enforced because the local citizens have the right to know that a majority of the workers aren't sick. While Austria is blocking Italian workers from entering the country, Switzerland is prioritizing the flow of labor to keep the economy running as normal as possible. Well, another person who agrees that it is essential for the border to remain open is ETH board president and molecular biologist Michael Hengartner. I spoke to him earlier about why medical staff coming from Italy must be allowed through, why it's too late to shut the border anyway, and that we must prepare for a pandemic. From your professional point of view, how concerned are you? There's definitely cause for concern. The big challenge for humanity is that we've never seen this virus before. There's no immunity in the human population. And therefore, uh, with the infection rate that this virus has, it will basically cross across the human population. I think it's going to be impossible to stop the infection rate. It will become a pandemic. And the challenge for governance is to keep the infection 
rate low enough that we can always manage the patients that need to be hospitalized. The virus seems to have a, prepon a, a preference to uh, cause bad symptoms in older people. People already have other conditions and uh, a fair fraction of these need to be hospitalized. Mm -hmm. And the risk is that we get too many of these at the same time so that hospitals cannot take care, proper care of these patients fit. Mm -hmm. And what happens when it does become a pandemic? I mean, what does that actually mean? It means that the virus will be spread across the globe and likely will stay with us for the foreseeable future. Uh, the flu would be an example of a virus that has been with us for a long time and stays with us. Uh, it's likely that we'll see basically a wave of infection, perhaps seasonal like the flu. Uh, it is likely that uh, we will develop uh, vaccines that will help us minimize mm -hmm. and reduce the infection rates. Um, so long term, I'm quite optimistic that we'll be able to challenge, uh, master this challenge without any problem. It's the short term where really the risks are right now. Uh, and how do you avoid the short term risk? I mean, when I met you, you shook my hand. You're not nervous of doing that. So I'll go and wash my hands afterwards. Um, washing your hands regularly, trying to keep a certain distance is, uh, is important. Um, I think young people also will tend to have much uh, simpler system, uh, symptoms, mm -hmm. uh, weaker sim uh, symptoms. Um, and why is that? Because there's not many children. Physicians are not quite sure yet. So kids do get infected. They probably become contagious. Um, but uh, part of their physiology. So again, old people tend to already have conditions. Uh, you might already have some lung problems, some heart conditions. And, and so having a, this additional stress of having mm -hmm. a fever, having a cough, uh, ha having uh, this immune system active and trying to defend yourself uh, causes initial stress, which for some people will uh, cause them to then become so sick that they need to be hospitalized. What about mask wearing, for example? I think masks, particularly given that there's a, a paucity of them right now, should be reserved for medical personnel in the hospitals. I think for normal individuals like you and me, social distancing, as we call it, keep distance, try not to be a, in a room with lots of people for a long period of time. Uh, again, uh, stay clean. Um, particularly if you start having symptoms, try not to be in close proximity to other people, to not to infect them. Uh, these are general good rules, uh, coronavirus or flu or other diseases. So I think these are things one can do to reduce the spread. Again, it will be impossible to completely avoid any risks unless you're a hermit and you live on the top of a mountain somewhere. Uh, but within society, you can reduce the risk to complete a uh, level that is reasonable for people in our age group. If you're in an uh, old people's home, then I think additional precautions would be appropriate. So how do you feel now being in Switzerland where we seem to be now kind of at the, the frontier of the spread of this virus? What do you think is gonna happen next here? Do you think that perhaps there are more cases than we really know about in Switzerland? That will in the future definitely be the case. The government has decided that they will only test people with, uh, who are at risk or have strong symptoms. So young people who might have weak symptoms will simply be asked to stay at home to minimize contagion. And again, I think the government has decided it will be impossible to completely dam it in. So now we need to manage it. Okay. The Swiss government, uh, in my opinion, has been uh, handling the situation quite well. Uh, the Swiss population has been handling the situation quite well. We're not in panic. We take it with a, a certain relaxed attitude as a uh, uh, normalcy, which I think is also very appropriate and, and very healthy. Do you think that closing the borders between Italy and Switzerland would be beneficial at all? You always have to weigh the, the, the economic impacts, the social impacts uh, versus the health impacts. At this point, we have so many cases within Switzerland that uh, the virus is here. Mm -hmm. We cannot prevent its import anymore in the sense that it's already here. Uh, again, uh, you might need to take precautions to keep the infection rate low enough. Um, I think closing the border, uh, again, is a political decision. I think from the medical point of view right now, it's not indicated. And from an economic point of view, I mean, that is It would be the... very, very difficult. You also need to think that a fair fraction of the medical personnel working in the Ticino actually comes from Italy. You close the border and suddenly your own hospitals are in big trouble. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.
Lots to think about there. Have you been affected by coronavirus or indeed the shutdown in Italy? Well, you can get in touch with us on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook. And of course, we're always available on our website, cnnmoney.ch. Bye-bye.